to Eden Mills one day from work, listening to the radio, listening to Madly Off in all directions. And there was a guy on the radio that made me laugh so hard, I had to pull over because I was going to kill someone because I kept, couldn't see anybody because tears were running down my cheeks. He's one of the funniest guys in Canada. His name is Derek Edwards. And, yeah, and he slays his audiences, whether it's the Winnipeg Comedy Festival or Just for Laughs, uh, CBC Comics or on the Comedy Network. Derek won the Pretty Funny Male Stand-Up Award at the Canadian <laughs> Comedy Festival last year in London. And he is living proof that Shania Twain is not the only hot property to have come out of Timmins, though she may have better abs. Please welcome Derek Edwards. Hi, thanks for ending that applause so quick I can get going. <laughs> you know, it's ironical, but literacy are one of my favorite chairs. <laughs> Welcome, uh, everyone. I, it seems I'm losing my memory. I, I was driving around. I was driving around. I've been doing a lot of driving recently. Driving around, and I, I didn't even check that. Oh, look, I'm running on fumes. I'm, I'm empty. How could I have forgot? So, oh, gas station. I pull over real quick. Now, this is what? Last week. Pull over real quick. Oh, okay. And then I had the wrong trousers. Oh, man. Check my pocket. Five bucks. I can fight off. You know, you have to have the hands of a surgeon to put five bucks of gas in your tank these days. I was shaking like a leaf. I, I, the nozzle thing, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> Look at that, 650. God damn it. We, we gotta get more of a squeegee or something, make some change. I, I've been, uh, I was driving actually yesterday on one of those highways, you know 17? Highway 17. And uh, man, I'm driving along, here's the sign coming up. It says Wawa, 723 kilometers. Right? I'd be crazy not to go. <laughs> it's, all, it's only a day away. <laughs> it's, it's like tomorrow. <laughs> For that matter, how far is Moscow? <laughs> I bet they probably don't have the technology for one of them big geese, you know? <laughs> but 17 is a freak show. I'm driving along there uh, last summer, and this happened twice. I'm driving along, and come around a bend, and what's in front of me? A, a house. On, on a flat bench, a house is going down the road. And it's really hard to pass a house. Just what the hell is this? Is this an agoraphobic on vacation? There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gravol in his day pajamas. <laughs> attached to you to your dwelling. <laughs> sure, sure I want to move, but I don't want to leave home. <laughs> you can't get this wallpaper anymore. <laughs> what goes on at your, the Remax dealer up there? What's the, hey, yeah, sure it's a lovely house, but how's it handle on the curb? <laughs> touristy locale, I've never been as precisely in this part of the world before, and I get a little freaked, you know, and I go out east, and it's very uh, quaint there, and you get a lot of these kind of places, you know, these artsy, crafty, knick-knack, oh, my wife drags me in, I get so tense, you know where candles smell, you just know you're going to get ripped off, <laughs> uh, that's vanilla, I can feel my pockets getting burned, <laughs> it just... <laughs> She leaves you and I stand there just looking around wondering who gathered this stuff together? <laughs> what the hell? What is that? It's a muckluck barometer. <laughs> there's, there's, there's not even two of them. It's not even practical. Like if there was two of them, maybe you could walk through the mall. <laughs> and then if somebody comes up, hey buddy, you got the barometric pressure? Well, 
What am I, an asshole? Sure, I got it right here. I think it's six. I gotta go. There's <laughs> just one. And then the lady, always a well-preserved woman in her 50s, come over and kind of mess with your head. Sir, I see you looking around. What would you like to spend? I see you looking. What do you like? What do you like here? <laughs> well, I'm torn, really. <laughs> I don't know whether to go with the wicker canoe. Or the, or the stained glass hammer. display, on display, like the holy grail. There's lights over it, and there's music. And there's a tag on the top said, imported. <laughs> well, what, are, what are you going to think but good? I find whenever I'm in the Maritimes, <clears throat> I like to have most of my tropical fruit. <laughs> Brought in. <laughs> grown pineapple. It tastes a hell of a lot like corn. check for a hundred thousand dollars would you please tell us what you did to earn that the guy says hey i can't remember <laughs> you know this is how i know i would get caught so quickly <laughs> if somebody ever gave me a hundred thousand dollars holy shit i would write that down what i did <laughs> because <laughs> what if just in case i might do it again <laughs> Leave a paper trail, Jesus, I'd have a book coming up. Right? <laughs> How I did it. <laughs> but the thing is, it only takes two hours to learn to be one of these assholes. I'll tell you how I know. I was <laughs> the life of privilege thing. I was in England one time and I go to come home and they've overbooked my return flight. And so I'm out of luck. I got to wait like almost all day at this place, Heathrow Airport. And so to make up, they bump me to first class. So I show up with jeans and a ball cap. I'm all tense. I'm going to first class. Hey, everybody else is in a blue suit typing on something. <laughs> I sit down. Jesus, the seats are really comfy. I like the seats. The lady comes out. Would you like some champagne? Oh, a real champagne? I guess wouldn't be the worst. Thing. And they bring you a menu. You can choose in case you're a bit peckish. You might, you might want to choose some food. And uh, you have a personalized list of movies that you might like to look at. And, and then I remember this guy from Coach came through the curtains and he walked up to the front of first class. And I could hear the stewardess saying, Sir, you're going to have to go back and use the washrooms in your own section. I remember having this thought as he walked by, just this. Who in the hell do you think you are? <laughs> is, is there no kind of barrier we can put up to keep these unmotivated motivated losers the hell out of my section? That's the <laughs> so it's easy to become a wanker. <laughs> I had to tell you, I saw in the paper they were advertising houses around Barrie and they said, now from as low as $499,999. <laughs> Are they still thinking they're fooling people with this? <laughs> $499,999. <laughs> 
That's not a half a million. This is, oh, Jesus, no. No, oh, these are priced to move. Because <laughs> I can't afford a half a million, but four ninety nine 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 nine. Jesus, I might have that on me. You know, just at the coffee shop. They charge me for a medium, I got a large. <laughs> but, uh, the thing was, when I was in England, how bizarre it was. They had a problem with hoof and mouth disease. So, you travel anywhere, you gotta go on these green mats and wipe your feet. You don't wanna spray. They got so freaked out, there was a headline in the London Times British government will hire army sharpshooters to kill sheep and cows. Hey, eh? sharpshooter. <laughs> so, you have to wonder how bad are their regular shooters? <laughs> Stalking the unpredictable cop. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, they're in the trees, they're in the trees, they're in the trees. <laughs> It's a cow. Do you really need a guy who's trained himself to slow down his own heartbeat? <laughs> Kill something. You can hunt with a brick. <laughs> yeah, we're all clear here, Nigel. Thanks for your attention. Have a great night.